please. All right. All right. And just put your vodka away because we've got Jared Cohen with us. He's the author of Children of Jihad. Jared, thank you so much for being with us. Tell everybody, first of all, what you did. And uh, it's a fascinating story. Well, thank you very much for, for having me this morning. When, when I was in graduate school, um, I tried to spend as much time as, as, as possible traveling throughout Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and, and, and Palestinian camps in Lebanon, basically trying to understand my peers, trying to understand how young people in the Middle East view themselves and their changing role in the world after 9-11. And, um, and talk about what you found. Because we, we were talking before about Iran. It's just the opposite of what Americans would expect. Especially in the younger generation. Very pro-Western, right? Well, absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting about Iran. I originally went there to, to interview the political opposition and the mm -hmm. dissident groups. And that, that's actually a pretty difficult thing to do in Iran, especially when they catch you doing it. Um, so uh, within a matter of days, I, I discovered that this vibrant underground youth culture that defied every stereotype that you could possibly imagine. and. and Within a week of being in that country, I realized that I was studying the completely wrong opposition. That in a country of 68 million people, when 67% are under the age of 30, the young people in that country are the de facto opposition. You know, they're the ones that are going to make or break the, uh, Iran. They're the ones that are going to determine that country's future. They're the ones that can, can bring about reform and, and change. And they don't necessarily reflect the views of the people leading the country. Well, the, the Iranian young people, I think, are, are very much guided by, by one fundamental principle that, uh, that I noticed, which is we'll love anything our government hates and will hate anything our government loves. Mm -hmm. um, and, they're, they're, and, and, and I guess as a manifestation of this, you know, anything their, their, their government hates sort of points in the direction of, of, of the United States. So you have actually, in, in my opinion, what's one of the most pro-American populations in the entire Middle East. Isn't that fascinating? And also we were talking before about the history of Iran. People don't realize that actually Western civilization had its foundings when the Greeks beat uh, the Persians in the Battle of Marathon, that, that Western civilization uh, is much younger than Persian civilization. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, people often forget that the, the Islamic Republic is a, is a brief 27-year hiccup in a 2,000-plus in a year history, uh, in which Iran, o over time, has actually been a relatively secular society. It's been a society that's been inherently democratic. The, the, the young people in that country are forward-thinking. They, they're extremely creative and innovative with regard to how they circumvent the police state apparatus, with regard to how they express themselves. And, and you know, it's interesting going back to this idea that young people are the majority in in, in, in that country. As I as I say repeatedly in, in, in Children of Jihad, in, in all of these countries that I went to, the largest party in every country is not a political party, it's not a religious group, you know, it's not any other entity. It, it's the largest conglomeration and party that, that, that actually has influence in these countries is a metaphorical or de facto youth party. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily have an ethnic, national, political, or religious face to it. You know, you write in this book about oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, in this book about uh, other experiences you've had where you've put yourself in danger in order to try and explore the views of young people and that you've had a gun pointed to your head at times when you were visiting Africa but you had this critical moment when you were in Iran when you realized that you were not free mm -hmm. and that every part of what you were doing was being investigated and watched and you broke down. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about that moment? Yeah, well first I have to apologize to my mom because I have put oh, her, no. I've put her through a lot of a lot of trauma. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's, it's very interesting. In, in Africa, I've been in really dangerous situations where I've uh, been confronted with child soldiers or different rebel groups and, and, and uh, really not necessarily been sure what was going to happen. Uh, in Iran, I never felt physically unsafe. I felt emotionally unsafe. It was a very strange thing to have my cell phone uh, tapped, to, to not feel like I could email the things that I wanted, to be followed around everywhere, to have people following me both overtly and, and uh, covertly, and just to, to, to not feel like you have the flexibility of, of, of thinking is a really powerful, um, although troublesome, experience. And, and you know, if I was just experiencing it during a, uh, my short stay there, it, it's, it's amazing you know, how young people in Iran, this is what they have to live and, and, and deal with on a daily basis. And, and they're so incredibly resilient mm -hmm. in how they, uh, they manage to coexist with a regime that doesn't let them have any freedom of expression, with a regime that doesn't let them charter their own course of action. So I, I, did, I, I broke down in front of this intelligence official. and, 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 and you know, started started you know, talking to him, explaining to him why can't I just go talk to people? Why can't I just you know learn about your country? You you keep telling me how misunderstood Iran is. Well, why don't you let me go out there and, and, and actually engage with people? And the reason he didn't want me to do that is when you engage with people in Iran, you realize that the the, the fabric of that society is anything but what the government of the Islamic Republic would want the outside world to think. Wow. Since 9/11, we've heard about this sort of war of civilizations that our culture and our society is so different from these places, and we see it on the press. We see death 
death to America marching mm -hmm. through the streets, but it sounds like, not just in Iran, but out in other countries in the Middle East, the youth, the people in, really in the street, not the people in the mosques, are more pro-American than we're being told. Is that accurate? Well, I completely reject the notion that we're in a clash of civilizations or that, that our, our society is any different than theirs. I mean, again, I go back to this idea of, of, of the, the fact that there is this metaphorical youth party that exists. I mean, young people all around the world, whether they're secular, non-secular, extremist, moderate, even if they're part of a terrorist group or a law-abiding citizen, they all want educational opportunities. They all want to belong in society. They all want their outlet for adventure. They're all very impressionable and easily influenced by uh, role models, both, both, both good and bad. I mean, there's certain common characteristics that young people all around the world have. And, and I found from my experiences that if I related to, to young people as youth, I could engage with anybody, no matter what their, their background was. I could sit at McDonald's with, with, with Hezbollah, or I could hang out with law-abiding citizens on, on university campuses. If I tried to engage with them first and foremost on politics or religion, we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't necessarily have as cordial an interaction because that's not our common denominator necessarily. Sure. Our common denominator is the fact that we're both the under 30 crowd. Yeah. All right. Hopeful. Which of course, nobody at this table, except Mika. <laughs> you all agree he's a member of that club. No, actually yeah. I'm not. All right, Jared, thank you so much. Thank Jared, you, Jared. Thank you the book is book. Thank you. Yeah, Children of Jihad, an important book to read. Uh, Jared, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. We'll, we'll be right back with Freddie Ball. <laughs>